Hi everyone, we are now going to look at two of the problems. Um, one is on page 540 for 1112A, and this is in our chapter 11, Capital Budgeting Decisions. So we have here Windhoke Mines of Namibia is contemplating the purchase of equipment to exploit a mineral deposit on land to which the company has mineral rights. An engineering and cost analysis has been made. And it is expected that the following cash flows would be associated with opening and operating the mine in the area. So they give us the various items. The mineral deposit would be exhausted after four years of mining. At that point, the working capital would be released for reinvestment elsewhere. The company's required rate of return is 20%. Determine the net present value of the proposed mining project, should the project be accepted. Well, the first thing we want to do is determine overall cash flows now and into the future. So as of today, which is time zero, today is time zero, the beginning of year one, we would have to expend $275,000 and we would have to um, move $100,000 of working capital into this investment. So today we would have to expend $375,000. So the present value of that is $375,000 because that is today's dollars. Now they go on to say the annual receipts will be $120,000. There's a little asterisk that says receipts from sales of ore, less out-of-pocket costs for salaries, utilities, insurance, and so forth. So they've already deducted anything they've had to pay for. So that'll be $120,000 a year for the next four years. The cost to construct new roads will occur in three years. So during year three, they're going to have to spend $40,000. So we want to deduct that. At the end of the fourth year, they're going to have a positive working capital of $100,000 that would be released for other items. So it's coming back out of the project. And then they would be able to sell the equipment they have for $65,000. And this is all expected. So we want to know overall for year one, what are the total cash flows? 120, year two, same thing. Year three, they'll be 80 because of constructing the road. But in year four, they're going to be 285,000. Now, we can't just add up all those dollar amounts and compare it to the 375 because those are future amounts that we're going to receive. So we want to know, and what we want to compute here is what we call the present value. In order to compare those future inflows, because they're all positive, to today's outflow, we have to reinstate those amounts in terms of today's dollars, backing out interest. So we need to find the present value of each one of those. Now, let me um, just run back into our net present value area. Okay, in the appendix 11B1, and this would be on page um, 548, 549, they talk about what present value is. And it's like we said, it's, you have to remember that 120,000 is a future amount. So what amount today, if we invested it, and this is what we're trying to figure out, at a 20% return would be 120,000 at the end of year one. So if you go to, um, there's present value tables, it's right after page 553, 554. These are factors we would use. So what we're going to do is say, okay, how many years in the future is that 120,000? Well, it's one year. 
So the periods are all the way on the left, one period, 20% interest. If we multiply that future amount of 120,000 times 0.833, that'll give us the value of that now, the beginning of year one. Stay in that column of 20%. How about the cash flows for year two? Well, at the end of year two, we'll have 120,000. We want to discount it or determine how much is that really worth in terms of today's dollars if there's a 20% interest rate. We'll multiply that by 0.694. So in terms of beginning of year one, that 120,000 is really 83,280. We do the same thing with the end of year three amount. Multiply it by the um, factor on the table for three periods, 20%, 0 0.579. So that $80,000 in terms of the beginning of year one's money would be 46,320. And finally, you do the same for the end of year four. Now you've converted those annual amounts, which are the actual amounts you're going to receive, but you are converting them in terms of today's money. So if you received those future payments today at a 20% discount, 99,960 plus 83,270 plus 46,320 plus 137,370, that's the positive cash flow from this project. The negative in terms of today's money is 375,000. So overall, this is a negative. It's gonna cost more in terms of today's money than the future money that will be out of this project. That means the rate of return on this investment is less than what the company is requiring of 20%. Now, is it a bad project? I don't know, but if they want a 20% discount, or 20% rate of return on the project, it's not a good project. So they could fool around with the interest rate there. What if they only wanted a 15% or an 18%? You could recalculate these using that table. And that is the magic of net present value and how we use it to evaluate these types of projects. Now, the other practice problem is the one on page 542, 11-17A, preference ranking of investment projects. So we have the management of Refco products is exploring four different investment opportunities. Information on the four projects under study follows. So they have projects one, two, three, and four. How much money they have to spend for each project is listed. The present value of the cash inflows at a 10% discount rate already computed. So they did what we just did in problem 1112A. So overall, there's the net present value, the positive present value for each project. The life of the project is six years and they've already calculated the internal rate of return as follows. Because the companies require a rate of return of 10%, a 10% discount rate has been used in the present value calculations above. So we use 20 in hours, they use 10. Limited funds are available for investment, so the company can accept all the available projects. So they want us to rank these. So let's take a look. Now, if we purely went from, I know I'm scrolling here. If we purely went from a net present value result, so we were like, what's the one that will give us the highest amount in terms of today's dollars? Well, we would look at the net present value line of that chart. Project four, 87,270. We expend 480. We're going to have inflows of 567,270. The difference is our net uh, present value. Project three would then be next with 73,400. Project two, 72,970, and then project one. So if we compare them using net present value, that would be our ranking. If we selected our project based on profit profitability index, we would need to compute each for each project. And that's in our first formula. Take the net present value of the project, 
divided by the investment required by the project. So you can see the calculation there. Project one, 66,140 divided by 270. That's a 24% profitability. Project two, the 72,970 divided by 450,000. That would result in a 16% profitability. Project three would result in a 20% and then project four, 18%. So the highest percentage would be ranked first. So project one, then project three, then project four, and then project two. So from a project profitability standpoint, that's how we would rank the projects. Finally, the company already um, calculated the internal rate of return on each project, and we're to rank them. So we would rank project two, then project one, then project four, then project three. So that is how we would rank them. Which ranking do you prefer and why? Well, which ranking is best will depend on Revco products opportunities for reinvesting funds as they are released from the project. The internal rate of return method assumes that any release funds will be reinvested at that 10%. This means that funds from project two would have to be reinvested in another project to yield 19%, okay? The project profitability index approach assumes that the funds released from a project are reinvested in other projects at a rate of return, which is in this case, 10%. The net present value is inferior to the project profitability index as a ranking because it only is looking at the total amount of net present value from a project, and it doesn't consider the amount of investment required. For example, it ranks project number one as fourth in terms of preference because it's low net present value, yet this project is the best available in terms of the amount of cash inflow generated for each dollar. So you really have to take these different ranking systems at face value and understand whichever one you use the resulting amounts that come out of the, the cash flow need to be invested a certain way to really maximize your return on your investment. Okay, so that is our um, look at problems from chapter 11. So please post any questions you may have on the discussion board. And maybe I'll get this to shut off now. There we go.